this world, there is real evil. In the darkest shadows and in the most ordinary places. These are the true stories of the innocent and the unimaginable. When a family looking for stability invests their hopes in an old house, restless spirits prey on their fears, tormenting them until they leave. But when another family moves in, the dead become angry and will stop at nothing until the house is theirs. Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. Union, Missouri, a small town about 50 miles southwest of St. Louis. European settlers helped establish the place more than 180 years ago. For most, their souls have moved on. But for others, the memory of a tragic past fuels their anger, compelling them to hound the living. In May of 2001, Stephen Lachance and his three children are beginning a new life. Hey, Eli, I found our glove. Hey, guys, come on. Picture time. We just took one yesterday. Grandma needs one here. Stephen is a corporate trainer. He specializes in improving relationships between management and employees. Recently divorced, he has sole custody of his three children, Eliza, Elliot, and Eli. Okay, there we go. The house is a rental, but until Stephen is ready to buy a place of his own, it's a perfect solution. It was nice and large. We've been living in an apartment where we were on top of each other. I felt very at home right away. It, it felt like I was in the right place. In that box by the fireplace. Stephen's oldest, Eliza, is 13. I thought the house was really neat. I didn't have to be really close to my brothers because our rooms had always been close together. And they weren't so close together in that house. Eli is 12 years old. Elliot, the youngest, is 11. I haven't seen that like a bazillion. This is so big compared to what we had. I was just like, sweet. Come on, guys. We had invested so much into this move emotionally. It wasn't just a, a, a normal move for a family. It meant something. Stephen works hard to make their new house a home. It was the first good thing that we had had happen for us in a long, long time. Dad, where are you putting that? What do you think? I thought about it right over there. Awesome. I'm going outside. OK, sorry. Stay there.
Stephen sends Eli and Elliot to the basement to get the garden hose. Eli? Yeah? Come on up here and give me a hand for a second. I gotta get the hose, Dad. Elliot, you get the hose. Eli, come on up. something come up after me, like boom, boom, up the steps. That just freaked me out, so I took off. What's in the basement, monster? Shut up, come it's on, not you funny. Guys, knock it off. Go out there. Guys, come on, I'll take it. No, I'm not going back down there. Come on, come on. I'm not going. I'll go with you? No. Okay. What I was trying to justify to him that it's the monster in the closet thing, you know, open the closet, there's no monster. I was doing the same thing with the basement. You take him to the basement, there's no monster. It was in your imagination. the boys must camp out in Stevens' room until their new beds arrive. Eliza usually joins them before going to sleep in her own room. Eliza, stop changing the channel so no, much. Watch the Cardinals game. I don't want to watch hockey. It's, it's baseball. baseball. Whatever. I'm trying to find a movie or something good to watch. One more commercial and it's bedtime. Dad, I have to go to the bathroom. Okay. Congratulations. Ellie, come on, buddy. Don't be silly. Are you go with me. <laughs> Come on, buddy, don't be silly. There's nothing to be afraid of. Oh, except the basement monster. Shut up, Eliza. <laughs> Please. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. <laughs> we'll watch this, because I can't find anything else. I wasn't quite sure what was going on. I thought maybe it was the emotions of the move. What's this house? Oh, it's there. Come on, buddy. Nothing out there. Come on, I'll take you down. 
Now even Eli and Eliza feel sorry for their little brother. We left him alone about it because it seemed like it bothered him pretty bad. A couple of nights later, the family returns home from a visit with Stephen's parents. Who left all the lights on? It wasn't us. There's something wrong here. Thinking someone might have broken in, Stephen checks all the doors and windows. But finds the house is secure. Excuse me a second. Kids, I want you to bed in five minutes. Sorry. Stephen was... calls his landlady. I gotta ask you something. We just came home. And when we got here, every light in our house was on. I was wondering if you'd been here. I would not come in the house without your permission. That would be illegal. Maybe you left the lights on. Well, maybe. I'm sorry to bother charge passes through Stephen's body. It was like this tickling inside that would work its way out. It scared me quite a bit because I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> Every kid's gonna be afraid of the dark at some point in their life. That's how I justified it. She was just experiencing that thing that all kids do. No, I want to sleep in here. You saw it, didn't you? Go back to bed. No, it's time to go back to sleep. I know you 
you saw. Stephen wonders if the children will ever feel comfortable in the old house. There's something wrong with it. I don't know what it is. The next day, Stephen's father, who is a general contractor, comes over to inspect the electrical wiring. Stephen hopes he'll be able to offer a logical explanation for the electrical shocks and the temperature variances. There's uh, no door on it, but this is a relatively recent box. No shorts. There's nothing here that would cause a shock down here or upstairs. That does need a door to protect the kids from it. Hey, Steve. Yeah. Look at this. That's a butcher shower. Three quarters of a century ago, the butcher's shower was used by farmers to cleanse themselves of blood after slaughtering an animal. The sink was used for cutting and cleaning the meat. and I don't know who was screaming. Saw something. I was like happy and terrified at the same time. The family moves in with Stephen's parents until they can find a new home. Once my children were put in danger, there was no way I was ever going to step back in there. Once again, the big old house is available. It isn't long before another family falls in love with it and signs a lease for the spacious home. The new tenants are Linda Marsh and her husband Emmett Bryson and their 13-year-old daughter Ashley. Emmett is a maintenance worker at a nearby nursing home. Linda is a sales associate at a local department store. They've moved from a trailer park on the edge of town. We thought we'd hit the jackpot. You just felt so comfortable in there, and it was like home. In the days that follow the move, 
Linda takes some time off work to decorate the house while Ashley's at school and Emmett is at work. you a pie. Welcome oh, to the thank neighborhood. You. It's key lime. Hope you like it. Oh, I'm sure Hope I will. It's not too I love sweet. It. Most of my thoughts were that someone was in the house. I didn't know what I was going to run into. It was scary. And I'm thinking it's me. some dessert? Your dad brought some ice cream. Who was slamming doors? Well, I thought that was you. I don't know what that was. It's just an old house. You're gonna have to get used to it. I heard something. You're not gonna tell me that you think this place is haunted too, are you? I love my wife and my kids. And I don't want to hear about that, you know? I ain't got time for that. I'm trying to think about I'm gonna get food on the table and, you know, pay the rent and stuff like that. What did you hear? It was nothing, baby, really. It was nothing. You're both crazy, and I'm going to bed. Ashley, come here, sit down, baby. Linda is beginning to wonder if there's something wrong with the house. That's, I think, the first time I really started thinking, okay, this house is haunted. There's something going on here that we have no answer for. Stephen Lachance thought the old house was out of his life forever, but an ominous dream pulls him back into its clutches. It was a reoccurring nightmare that happened, but it frightened me. I had it enough times that something was trying to tell me something. Hello. 
name's Steve Lachance, and I used to live here with my family, and I was wondering if I might be able to speak to you about the house. A shocking nightmare compels Stephen Lachance to warn the new tenants of his former home. I did not want to go to the house. I was afraid of it. But I wanted to make sure everything was going all right. Honey, this is Stephen Lachance. Hey, Mr. Bryson, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. He used to live in the house before us. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you like some coffee? I would, thank you. Do you mind if I speak frankly? I'll go right ahead. Well, when we first rented here, some strange things started to happen. Yeah. This is a bit difficult, but I mean, I, I don't know you, and you don't know well, me. Why don't but... you just say what's on your mind? It's haunted. The house is haunted. Yes. That's the reason why we moved out. I mean, I, I, I felt so good to know that it had happened to them, too. I wasn't the only one. I felt then like, okay, I'm not crazy. My daughter is not crazy. There are a lot of unanswered questions, but that's the reason. You mean to tell me that you moved out of this great house because you thought it was haunted? For the sake of my children, yes, I did. I didn't know the guy that well. And that's why I wanted to come over and talk to you. Oh, Lord, here we go. What kind of things did you see? My son, in the basement. My daughter, upstairs. Look, we're not moving away from here if that's what this is all about. You think our landlady's gonna give us a security deposit back just because you think this place is haunted? It's a lot of money. I anyway, I don't believe in all of this nonsense. We're gonna deal with them the best way we know how, but we don't need your help. Look. It was very nice to meet you, okay? But I have to get to work. I'm sorry. No, it's all right. I didn't believe it happened to me until I saw it for myself. It took me a long time to understand. My advice to Linda from the beginning was get, get out. I mean, it made a whole house shake. If it could do that, don't tell me it can't hurt you. I know it can hurt you. <laughs> Linda describes her own experiences in the house. The one thing Linda and I both decided is we wanted to find out why these things were occurring. And I was doing this as much for myself as I was doing it for her, because I was dealing with my own demons, I guess you could say. Stephen is determined to find someone to help solve the haunting. Yeah, I know. I, I don't even know anyone in the school. I don't even want to go to classes anymore. It's so creepy. Sometimes I hear weird noises when I'm upstairs. And I ask mom or dad about it, and dad's just like, oh, you're crazy. And mom seems like she's hiding something from me, but I don't know. Uh, hey, I, I gotta call you back. No, I just, I gotta go. the tree was hanging upside down. Ashley. At that point, I was really concerned that she was having some kind of mental problems. No, I'm not smoking anything. And my first concern was drugs. Mom, I swear to God, I saw a baby in the tree. I accepted the fact that she was hearing noises because I did too. But as far as seeing there. things, I was not seeing the things that you she don't believe was. me? Ashley, there's nothing there. Oh, forget it. Just leave me alone. Linda is shocked to learn that Ashley has been skipping school. She didn't like school. She didn't go to school. I know, everyone here is so lame. She was just very unhappy. 
Ashley, we need to talk. I gotta go, I'll call you back. I have something very serious to talk to you about. What? Um, I know that you've been missing school. And Are you I, spying on me? No, I got a letter from your school. An excuse absence is Ashley. Can you Ashley. Leave this? Ashley. Ashley. Oh. What have you done to Don't yourself? Don't touch me. Ashley, what have you done? I cut myself, see? What? Why would you and do And I'll it? do it again, because it makes me feel better. I was just so concerned that she was going to commit suicide that I checked her in the hospital. Linda's doctor explains that cutting is a phenomenon among teenage girls who are trying to alleviate stress and anxiety. Well, the cutting releases endorphins. It's a substance that makes the body feel good. The I was very upset. It gets too deep in the I just wanted to get her some kind of help. Ashley knows this is no good Ashley for Ashley is committed to the hospital for a period of observation. She knows. Until she the knows. doctors can decide the best therapy for her. Stop cutting yourself. But Linda is afraid none of the doctors will accept what she believes, that Ashley's suffering is caused by something supernatural. I had a really bad feeling that somehow she was possessed. Emmett reluctantly consents to an investigation. I have to tell you, Steve, I don't like this. When Stephen finds someone who might help put an end to the haunting. Stephen, it's nice to meet you. Betsy Burnett Berlanger is the director of a paranormal investigative team called the St. Louis Spirit Search. When we first walked into the home, we felt spirit activity. I could tell that it was not human and that it was something otherworldly and uh, exactly what it was, I had no idea. What was it? What, what did you feel? Okay, we did feel some activity as we came in. What I need is my meter. Betsy and her partner quickly prepare for a thorough investigation of the house. And what we plan to do is to start upstairs in the, in the bedroom. Emma thinks bringing the investigators into the house is unnecessary. When you lived here. And dangerous. Where did you feel most of the activity? I believe in that dead dog's life. And I told him, you're going to keep messing with stuff around here, and you're going to stir up something that you really ain't looking for. So I need you to stay here while we go through the house, and then we will return here, and I will tell you exactly what we find. Good. OK. All set? Is it clear? No, I can't understand it. It's coming from here. We did pick up a voice. Now, we could not make out what the voice was saying. It was very garbled and very muffled. But it drew us to that direction. The EMF meter picks up electromagnetic fluctuations. There's a presence. I can sense a presence. Betsy senses an old man standing in the corner. He was not shying away from us. He was just observing what we were doing and why we were there. We decided to be very, very quiet and see if we could pick up the actual words of what this man was saying to us. And what we picked up immediately was a voice saying, this is my house. So we got almost a scenario of, of his life, that this had been his house for a long period of time. He had no intention of leaving.
Ashley's bedroom, Betsy feels a powerful negative energy. I don't know if it's spirits or... It's hard for me to describe to you the amount of negative energy that we were feeling in there. It was not pleasant. It was not a pleasant place to be. Why don't we sit down and try and figure out where this energy is coming from? We sat there for a good 15, 20 minutes, trying to absorb, to figure out if there was actual entities there or if this was poltergeist activity that was generated by this adolescent girl. Poltergeist is a German word meaning noisy ghost. Now, a lot of people believe that poltergeists are actual entities. I'm not one of them. I believe that it is energy, and it is energy that is usually negative. Betsy concludes that Ashley possesses psychokinetic abilities. She has created a physical embodiment of her own negative energy. This entity was very excited and was very agitated by the fact that we were there trying to find out who it was. Betsy stepped into a psychic force field, a vortex of spiritual energy. It's like standing in a wind tunnel almost. I mean, your clothes aren't blowing around, but you can feel that vibration in your body. I felt enough. Betsy believes that energy vortexes originate deep inside the earth and can attract spirits. Especially spirits who are wandering, who don't understand where they are trying to find their way. I did not advise Linda to move out of that house. It wasn't my place to do that. I did uh, tell her that if she could not come to terms with living with the man upstairs or having the entity in the basement, that might be something she might consider. Who exactly are these spirits? That we don't know. Betsy tells Stephen that traumatic events of the past could be responsible for the haunting. Stephen decides to take the matter into his own hands by researching the history of the Union House property. In the county records and local library, he uncovers a history of violence and misery. Stephen's research indicates that the property may have belonged to a Confederate officer and slave owner. Another Confederate officer a renegade named Captain Wilson was executed by firing squad on the property. After the war, it was also the site of many shootings and murders. The bloody and tragic activity continued to modern times. And what we found out is there's probably many reasons that, you know, yeah, it probably is haunted, and there's probably good reason for it to be haunted. Mm-hmm. 
Isn't it? Honey, what's wrong? Isn't it? Isn't it? I saw something. Where? At the foot of the bed. It looked almost human. I tried to tell you this, but you wouldn't listen. So now I've seen it. Now I believe it. That's because I've seen that myself. Hoping to rid the house of the spirits, Stephen arranges for a Roman Catholic priest to perform a blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to go back. I bless this house in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to have to leave. Father, you didn't do all the upstairs bedrooms. It's not necessary to do all the rooms in the house. But my son and the psychic said there was a lot of activity in the basement. He seemed like he was just very uneasy the whole time he was in the house. But he just seemed like all he wanted was to get out. Uh, it's been a pleasure, and I hope to see you in church. Although the blessing was brief, Linda remains hopeful that it worked. what it was, but it felt like there were hands around my throat. I can't do this anymore. We'll leave. Obviously headed to a nervous breakdown. I would rather take pills and die than to keep going like this. Now listen to me. Nice to pack your bags. Yeah, I said I'm coming to get you, and we're getting you out. I'll be over there in five minutes. Stephen Find believes that the, the evil in the house is tearing Linda apart. Don't do anything foolish. Think about Ashley. <laughs> I wasn't sure what was going on in the house. Linda! saw the bruises on her body. I did that to you. Spirit. Oh, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, let me help you. Get up. At that point, she was suicidal. Right here. Come on, sweetie. Linda is admitted to the hospital. 
she remains there under close observation for four days. She is examined by psychiatrist Dr. Imran Chishti. At that time, she was depressed and felt hopeless and suicidal. Linda, tell me about the footsteps. It is not until her third meeting with the doctor that Linda told him the real reason she wanted to die. Do you hear voices? What would you say if I told you that my house was haunted? You'd think I was crazy, wouldn't you? No, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't think you're crazy at all. My reaction was, I believe you. And your house may have been haunted. Tell me more. Let me, let me tell you. Dr. Chishti believes he has a unique perspective on the world of spirits. I'm Muslim by faith, and uh, we grew up reading the Quran and the presence of these beings of their world is documented in all religious books. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a prescription for your anxiety. Linda is diagnosed okay. with depression, but Dr. Uh, Chishti so believes she does not suffer from a mental illness okay. that might cause her to have hallucinations this. or hear voices. He encourages Linda to stop her investigations into the hauntings and move out of the house immediately. I don't know of many people who have challenged his spirits and walked away. What would you do if someone broke into your house in the middle of the night? You would chase them out. It is their place. And if you stand there and say, well, I don't believe in you, then they might be compelled to show you something to make you believe in them. Linda arranges to move in with a relative who lives nearby. Ashley is released from the mental health facility. She'll be staying with her mother until Emmett finds another place suitable for the whole family. Since we left the house, things are so much better. Our whole family life has just improved a lot. It's, it's pretty much back to where it used to be. For Stephen Lachance, what haunted the Union House remains a mystery, but he does have a theory. Whatever is there, for some reason, is targeting everyone's worst fears. Eliza's afraid of closets, so her closet door opens at night. Elliot's afraid of clowns, he's seen clowns. My worst fear would be me not being able to get to my children. I think this place is a predator. I think it thinks. I know that sounds crazy, but to live through what I've lived through and to see how it would pick certain things that, that it shouldn't have known, but it didn't know, um, how, how else would you explain that? Soon after Linda and Emmett move out, another family with six children move into the house. Within six months, they too move out. In this world, there is real evil. In the darkest shadows and in the most ordinary places. These are the true stories of the innocent and the unimaginable. When single mother Selena Warner moves into a new house, a childhood fear comes back to haunt her. She tries to ignore it. But when her sister encounters something supernatural, Selena can no longer deny that what she fears is real. Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. In the northern state of Michigan, the dark shadow of winter dominates much of the year. Vast numbers of restless souls are buried here. 
despite the barriers of ice and hardened earth. Their spirits roam the frozen landscape, lost, unaware of their own death, still seeking the warmth of human contact. Thank you. In the spring of 2000, <sighs> Selena Warner separates from her husband and tries to make a fresh start. This is my street. You excited? Out of all the house searching I had done, there was nothing that was quite like this house. And, you know, it was, it was perfect. I was so excited about getting the stuff in there so I could just start living my life in this big house. Selena's sister, Adrian, lives nearby and is a constant source of support. Selena and I are very close. When she was a child, I always played second mother to her. And it grew stronger as we got, grew older. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. So this is Gabe's room. Selena's three-year-old son, Gabe, so awesome. stays with her grandmother while she finishes moving. It's so much bigger than his last one. I know, place for his toys, everything. I'm glad. Now, which, which one's the closet? This one right here. It's big, it's nice. Well, then it's too big for him. Is, is that another closet, or where does that go? Um, that actually goes up to the attic. Can I see it? <laughs> OK. Selena has always been scared of attics. Ever since she slept in one as a child. My head was filled with fog or something. Just a lot of pressure and tension. Are you okay? Are you all right? Can I get you something? As soon as I got to the bottom of the step, it just lifted off of me. I feel better now. It just became calm again. It was just when we were upstairs. put this in front of the door? Sure. I don't want Gabe going up there. Alright. Let's tell you what, why don't we just go get the rest of your stuff moved in? Okay? helps her sister turn her house into a home. She's more of the creative type than I am. So I left the decorating up to her. I love it. Oh, shoot, will you grab my, thank you. Got it? Later that day, Huh. 
It looks like it's been cut. It probably just breaks that way. That's okay though. I will fix this like it was never ever broken. That night, once the house is ready, Selena picks up her son Gabe from her grandmother's house. Come here. Oh, God, you're going to be. Oh. Did you have a good day? Yeah. You had a good time? Yeah? That reminds me. What's up? Did you get a chance to think about that question I asked you? I did. And? Of course, I would like to watch Gabe. Come on. With her grandmother getting older, Selena needs someone to take care of Gabe while she works. It was a very perfect arrangement. I knew that he was going to be with someone safe and he, you know, he would be okay. It here. It's scary. Why is it scary? Because it's new? He couldn't really explain to me what was wrong. Oh, honey, that's all right. Look, lie back down. Lie back down, good boy. I am going to be here with you, okay? I'm always right down the hall, all right? The next day, Adrian returns to watch Gabe. Hey, it's me. Hey. Hey, I'm so sorry I'm late. That's all right. Oh, man. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Gabe is taking a nap. Okay. Um, I usually feed him around noon. Okay. Um, I'll be at work. If sure. you need anything, you yeah. know how to reach me. Yeah. Um, oh, and I made a key for you, madame. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Um, call me if you need anything. Okay, have a good day. Thanks. I'll see you time. later. I knew somebody was there, just watching. Leave me alone. 
Stay away from me! Wrong. I don't want to freak you out, but some really weird things have been going on around here. Like what? What's going on? I was bothered by the feelings that I was having, but I had I to let like, her know. I feel like I'm being watched. I could swear there is somebody here. Like I feel like my sister was watching. like, "Well, you know, could something be going on here?" And I was like, "Well, I don't know." Do you ever feel that? She kind of shrugged it off a little bit, didn't want to believe it. I don't either. I mean, I seriously thought I was going insane. It really freaked me out. Oh my God. Gabe. Gabe? Gabe. Gabe. Oh my God, you gave mommy such a fright, young man. Oh my God, you just had to go to the bathroom. Okay, all right, sweetie, you get back into bed. I didn't know what was going on. I mean, I was terrified. The next morning. Honey, you're standing too close to the TV, sweetie. Come on. Well, isn't that better? You're not going to get any headaches now. No. Oh. He's fine, he's fine. Um, I want to move out. Selena believes her house is haunted. But I can't... Adrian does too. I know, but I think I got us something that can help. But she's more intrigued than frightened. I read in here, she had read in a book that if you take a picture, if something's there, it's gonna come out on the picture. And then get the photos developed. And Hopefully so these pictures might be able to tell me something. You know, we can figure out what to do or we can take the pictures to the experts and see if they can show us what to do. What do you think? I think it's worth a shot. Okay. Yeah. Here, I'll take this. Okay, thanks. Okay, I'll be right back.
Selena? Selena, come here. Come here. Take a picture. There is something right beside me. I told her that I felt that was somebody was there. Okay. So weird. I, I didn't know what to think. I had never experienced anything like this ever before. Let's take the rest of the house. Okay. okay. All right. enough being here all by myself all day long. You do it. Well, look, I'll go with you. Okay. Okay. The next night, Selena returns home from work with the developed photographs that she and Adrian took around the house. Sure enough, right away, I caught it. It looks like a man standing there. It was there. a man. A slender man, he's very tall. I could see a cigarette with smoke coming from the cigarette. And look at that. Oh my God. Screaming, it looks like it's screaming. There's a face, it was like a ghostly face. But I was getting the impression that he was screaming at me to get out. What am I gonna do? What can I do? I'm saving, but it's gonna be a month before I can move out. I knew I couldn't leave, so I needed to try to figure out what else I could what do. What is the worst they can do, right? I mean, they're dead. I was terrified. I want to move Gabe into my room. I know, I know. I want him to sleep with me. Okay, okay. I don't want him near that okay, door. Okay, okay, I completely understand. We'll figure it out. I didn't thing. know if okay. what was there was good or bad. We'll get through this, I promise. that she and Selena ask their neighbors what they know about the house. Okay, look, this stuff happens all the time, all right? Don't worry about it. Whoever we talk to, we can just, you know, ask them if they've ever noticed anything weird happening in our house, okay? I was a little embarrassed to bring this up because I know not everybody believes in certain things like this. Look, there's somebody right there. Come on. Let's talk to you. Hey there. Oh, hi. I'm, I'm Selena. Hi, Selena. And this is my sister, Adrienne. Hi. Adrian. Nice Louise. to meet you. Nice to meet Hi, you. Hi, um, I just moved into that house right there on the corner. <laughs> I'm glad to see someone finally moving. Um, we were just wondering if anything strange had happened in the house or anything odd. Nobody ever told you? Told me what? The man who lived here before you died in the house. 
He died of a drug overdose. What happened to the family after he died? They moved. Right over there. That red brick right there, that house. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, good very luck. Much. Thank, Thank you. you. Wait! Where are you going? Selena was a little nervous to go down there and stir up old wounds. I told her we have to see if anything strange was happening when they lived here. Hi. Hi. Um, I just moved into your old house on the corner. Um, some weird things have been going on, and we were wondering if those weird things happened when you lived there. My father died in that house. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I was very, very reluctant to show her the pictures at first. I didn't know how she was going to react to them. Does it mean anything? I took them in, in my kitchen with Adrian. That's my dad in the photo. The last time I saw him was in that house. Hey, Dad! You said you quit. We argued and... Yeah, I tried. Honestly, I did... Do you know what you're doing to us? What are you talking about? Do you know what you're doing to us? No, it's just... I never saw him alive after that. Wait! Wait! He died of an overdose that night. I'm so sorry. Do you think that maybe his ghost is causing problems in the house now? No. He made mistakes, but the daughter he said that he was a good man. He wouldn't harm a soul. What's going on? Hi. Hi. These people moved into our old house. his spirit, Mom. He's still there. They took a picture. How did you get this? I, I took it in, in my kitchen. This is how we used to talk. He would stand there and we would The talk mother doing... told me when she did the dishes, they would have conversations. And that's what he was doing. He was standing behind me, possibly wanting to hold a conversation, possibly wanting to Get some help. I'm, I'm so sorry that we bothered you. you. I'm just really sorry. It's okay. Thank you. I felt like I had some questions answered. I might be able to deal with this a little bit better. I knew that the man that passed there was no harm to me or my son. I feel a little bit better, but I. We thought, okay, we're getting somewhere with this. And I felt better. And I'm not gonna have to worry about Selena and Gabriel, they're gonna be just fine. The house remains calm for a few weeks. Sorry. <laughs> so how was everything tonight? Oh, it was fine. Yeah, yeah? Nothing unusual? No, no, not at all. Even with the attic? No, it was dead quiet. Okay. Good. Good. Oh, yeah, by the way, um, Gabe wanted me to show you this. He did this for you. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my God. Yeah. I don't know what to do about it. Oh my god, honey. <laughs> 
Honey, what's the matter? Gabe, are you okay? Honey, are you, oh Gabe. my God, he's burning up. I didn't know what was going on with him. Look at me. Look at me. He looked like he was possessed, like he was in a trance. Okay, we gotta take him to the hospital, baby. Okay. Um, oh, baby, I'll get baby. your keys, okay? Thank you, thank you. Just go, 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 go. There's there's no sign of the high fever. Okay. We've done neurological tests and everything is fine. Okay. And what is it then? It, it could be psychological. They told me that possibly the reason why he was waking up this way was due to my husband and I's split and possibly it was affecting him because of that. It's very traumatic for a child. He may still be getting over the breakup. Dr. Wilson, you need an ICU. It's okay. It's going to be fine. Despite the doctor's reassurance, Selena wonders if the spirit in her home is causing Gabe's night terrors. Hey, what is all this? Well, I'm not going to be afraid in my own house anymore. And I wanted to get stuff that makes me feel safe. Huh. She hopes Where that surrounding herself with religious symbols will prevent the spirit okay. from becoming oh, aggressive. Yeah. How was Gabe today? Oh, he was fine. He was fine. He was, um, he was a little tired, but I stayed with him while he napped, so. You are so good to us. <laughs> it's all right. Mm -hmm. I mean it. Thank you. No problem. All right, I'm going to take off. All right, I'll see you later. Drive safe. After several paranormal events, Selena decides Gabe will be safer staying with her grandmother. Meanwhile, Adrian is determined to help her sister clear the ghost from the house. I got frustrated. I got tired of it. I wanted them gone. And I went through every room rebuking in the name of the Lord. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, they shall cast out spirits. Oh, God. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out spirits. In the name of the Lord, I rebuke you. I command you to leave. I just felt if I went any further, 
something bad was going to happen to me. And I walked away. I was so scared. Am I doing something right or is this going to get worse? Unsure where to turn, Selena and Adrian consult a local psychic. What would you like to know? Selena decides to test his abilities. Well, um, I'm separated from my husband, and I'd like to know if we're going to get back together. No, you won't. But that's not really what you're here for. There are spirits in your house. I was stunned. I, I didn't know how to react. For one, I had not even mentioned to this man that there was even anything going on. I didn't even say anything to him about my house. You tried to disturb them. Yes. He goes, you made the activity worse. The Lord, I rebuke you. I command you to leave. I was so scared because how would he know? I was frightened. You don't have the authority to do this on your own. Can you get rid of them? I don't have the power to do that. Well, who does? I could suggest the church. We asked him what we could do. And he said that we could call around and we could possibly seek help through churches, things like that. But that's it. He couldn't give us any other help than that. Selena calls several local churches, hoping to find someone to bless her house. God, you can't do anything sooner than that. But no one is immediately available. Okay, all right, Father, thank you. I'll, I may call you back. Found it. Adrian has another yes. idea. Oh, remember that program I listened to about those ghost hunters? They found their number. She heard a yeah, radio show it that featured work. local paranormal yeah, researchers. Come on, just call them. I contacted this organization requesting that they come and do an investigation. I've tried every other avenue, don't know what else to do. Hello? Brenda McCulka is the co-director of the Southeast Michigan Ghost Hunters Society. Well, things like uh, hmm. When I first spoke to her, I became really concerned because she sounded very frightened. Would it be okay if we came out one night next week to investigate? I wanted to do the investigation right away. She was, uh, she was pretty frightened. Brad McCulka is the team's director. Brenda's gonna interview you here while I set up the technical equipment around the house. We met the tenant and we spoke to her for a very few minutes about what our investigation was going to entail. If even half of what she said was true that was actually happening, it was going to be a good investigation. Is there any room you don't want us to go into? No, no, the house is yours. Go anywhere you need to. I felt a sense of relief. Oh gosh, this is going to go away. We're going to get help. The team's psychic. Mary Micah is drawn to the attic. I could feel an entity watching me. That energy did not want us there at all. It was very negative. feel the entity sucking the energy from you. Everybody living there was invading on his space, his privacy, and he just wanted people out. Brad sets up a motion detector. It will trigger an alarm when anything moves in front of the camera.
people live here? Um, there's just two of us, my son Gabe and I. Um, but Adrian babysits during the day, so she's here a lot. Um, Adrian, you don't live here, but you've witnessed these events too. Yes, yes, I... Both of us have felt like we're being watched. They made me feel really calm and oh, let me know that it would be okay. And they said they know it seems like it's a bit overwhelming, you know, but they were hopefully going to be able to tell me what was going on there. is far less hostile than the one she encountered okay. in the attic. It's all right. It's okay. He sensed a lot of sadness. You can trust me. I didn't sense um, any hostility whatsoever. He wanted to make good with his family before he crossed over. That's where the very sad energy was coming from. I thought it was just very sad that somebody that had a wonderful family and a good life could, you know, get caught up into drugs and destroy everything they had and then die of an overdose and not be able to tell his family he loved them and that he's sorry for everything he did. I found that very, very tragic. Anything else unusual happen? Um, a picture fell off the wall in my room. It was really scary. Yes. Uh, the picture in my... What was that? Motion detectors. Did we get something? I don't know. I'm rewinding it right now. It's an orb, uh, traces of, of a spirit. There it is again. Well, what's it doing? I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what do we get ourselves into? Well, what's it doing? Okay. Here, let's go. I was excited about what we were seeing. It was almost like you were given a glimpse of what we're all after. You gotta see that again. Feelings are nice to have, but you can't prove that. When we have that flashing light on video, that's like a you know, concrete evidence. At that point in time, I'm like, okay, we do have something. They're not imagining the things. Now we have to figure out a you know, plan of action. To go back, view all the tapes, find out exactly what you do have. After spending several hours in the house, the researchers are confident that there are at least two entities present. So what do we, what happens now? What How do we get rid of these? I want them gone. I told them I couldn't move out. I could care less if the nice ones stay, but the one upstairs gotta go. Once we, once we know more. The researchers are reluctant to tell Selena that they may not have a solution. You have to be careful because you can't tell someone who might not have the means to move, you need to get out now or something bad is going to happen. So you have to kind of tread lightly and just advise them the best that you possibly can. The spirit in the attic seems to be very territorial. Just, just don't go up there. As long as we stay out of his territory, he'll stay out of ours. And I'm like, well, then we got a deal. It probably won't bother you at least until we can tell you more about what we found. We'll we be happy to We were stressed somebody. to the max, and we didn't know where to go from there. You'll get my report within the week. OK, well, thank okay. you. So I was trying to force myself to be a little bit more comfortable with it, but on the inside, I was terrified.
Yeah, sweetie, I'll be home for dinner tonight. Okay. All right, I'll see you later. Can you put can you put Nana on the phone? Selena keeps Gabe at her grandmother's house while she waits for news from the investigators. Yeah, thanks again. Okay, yeah, I'll talk to you later. Bye. What's wrong? What if they can hear us? What if they know we're trying to get rid of them? That's what I'm worried about. Are you expecting anybody? No. I'm not either. Adrian recognizes the daughter of the man who died in the house. No, no, no. You remember my sister, Adrian? Hi. Hi. I'm here so I can make peace with my father. She says, I think this is going to be the only thing that's going to help, you know, my dad move on. This is a friend of mine, and I think she can help my father move on. I'm a spiritualist, and I'd like to try and communicate with the spirit in the house. Uh, if you guys don't mind, I'd really like to walk around the house. Not at all. Sure. Please. Thank you. This is exactly what we need. The woman will use purified salt water and prayer to bless the house. Dear Lord, please protect me from harm and wickedness. Selena and Adrian hope that her blessings might also expel the angry spirit in the attic. Gives you. You can be at peace. The daughter returns to the basement to make peace with her father's spirit. Dad, it's me. Peace. I love you very, very much. And I'm not angry at you. I forgive you. And I hope that you can forgive me. light in the house. If anything changes, if you feel anything different, anything unusual happens, please feel free to give me a call, okay? Okay. okay. Anything unusual. Okay. 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 Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If it was like an instant calmness, a ton of tension was just lifted off of us. The house remains peaceful for several days. Selena decides it's safe to bring her son back home. You want some cookies? Yeah. How many does mommy let you have? Two. I will let you have three. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go get some cookies, okay? Gabe? Gabe! No! No! Gabe! No! Gabe! 
on, look at me. Look at me. Come on. There's nothing there. Come on. Look at me, sweetie. Come on. Come on, Gabe. Come on, Gabe. Come on. Come on. Gabe. Help me. Come here. What happened? I don't know. I just turned around and... Gabe. And, and the minute I turned around... Come here, sweetie. How you doing? It was on the Hi. ground, honey. It was Hi. just like before. Is it is cold? Yeah. You could see, I mean, just the look of his eyes that something was wrong. Here she is. Okay. And I was like, I'm, I'm out of here. I knew that the man who had passed had moved on. He went on to where he needed to be, but that thing in the attic stayed behind. That night, Selena, Adrian, and Gabe finally leave the house for good. Knowing that I didn't have to go back to the house was a relief. Okay. You sure? When I left that house, it was like an instant sense of peace. I just hope that whatever that was, it's it's moved on and it no longer hurts or bothers anybody else. young woman is repeatedly attacked by an unseen entity in her home. I felt hands around my throat. Paranormal investigators try to identify the presence, but it's a desperate race against time. Cross Satan under your feet. Stephanie? Culminating in a final battle between the forces of good and evil. My wife was dying. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. Over 150 years ago, the soil of Manassas was awash in blood as the American Civil War raged. Two major battles at Bull Run saw more than 20,000 wounded or killed. There are those who believe the land around here has been permanently scarred, infused with the tortured souls of men, women, and children who died before their time. In the fall of 2008, Manassas resident Stephanie Winter attends a party at her friend Peter's apartment. She discovers he has a fascination with the dark arts. I noticed on his shelf he had books that I'd never heard of. The Necronomicon includes magic spells and advice on how to summon demons and spirits. Actually, it's a real useful book. Yeah, if you're dead. You should spend some time amongst the living, Peter. I was just hoping to spend a little bit more time with you. I think he got the wrong impression. <gasps> In his mind, I had feelings for him, which was not the case. What's the problem? You know what the problem is, man. I'm married, okay? Get it. I'm just paying you a compliment. Lay off. The more I tried to tell him, no, the more persistent he got. <gasps> he pulled some of my hair out. What are you doing? Just getting what I need for a love spell. A love spell? You are sick! At that point, I was done. I didn't want any part of anybody who was into that sort of thing. Despite the strange night, Stephanie is up the next morning at 5 a.m., eager to get to work on the home she and her husband just moved into. You going to work this morning? Uh, it's late shifts. It's a lot of unpacking to do. The couple has been married for just a year. Stephanie's a bartender at a local restaurant. 
Her husband, Nicholas, works in construction. Did you have fun last night? I uh, should have stayed here. Something wrong? Everything all right? Yeah, no, everything's fine. I just, um, I just have a lot of unpacking to do. Yeah, well, once we get it done, we can finally call this place home. I was excited to be moving into a house out of an apartment, and it was a step in the direction that I was trying to go in life. Uh, yes. I'll be home by six tonight. Okay. See ya. I was happier than I'd been in a really long time, and I was looking forward to making it home for my husband and I. You forgot something, babe? You forget something? What are you doing here? Peace offering. Did you wait until Nick left? No. I was just bringing you flowers. He was coming by my house 5.30 in the morning on his way to work, and it just really made me uncomfortable. Well, I didn't realize you wanted to get all dressed up for me. You need to leave, all right? Get out. OK? What? You don't want to say no to me. Get out! Get out! It got to the point where I felt like I was hiding in, you know, my own home. I finally had to completely shut it down and tell him to stop calling me, don't contact me. Please, nothing. Weeks go by. Stephanie's unwanted admirer stays away. But has he really heeded her request to leave her in peace? Is that? I don't know. Is there somebody in the house? I'm making my bed. No, wait, wait, wait. What if they have guns? I checked the windows. No one? No, th th nothing's unlocked. There was no way that it could have been an intruder. We're thinking maybe we didn't have it set up there right, or, you know, it slipped off or something. A lot of stuff that's heavy. Our nerves were all jangled. Eventually, we fell asleep and really didn't think too much more about it. Weeks later, Nick is working at home. As a hobby, he creates free tattoos for friends and enjoys the challenge of coming up with new designs. I see this candlestick thing hit the wall out of the corner of my eye. It made this big black mark on the wall. I started talking to my wife about it, and we were like, what can, the only thing that 
that could be doing something like that would be like a ghost. Looking at her back, and I see blood start to form. What the hell did you do? What, what is it? What did you do? What is it? Baby, what did you do? You, no, you're bleeding. Hey, hey, you're bleeding. What is it? No, you, babe, you don't want to take. You don't want to see this, okay? Just it's no, too. no, just. It was really burning. It was just on fire. for a love spell? There have been disturbing events in Nicholas and Stephanie Winter's home ever since she told a love-struck friend with a fascination for the dark arts to leave her alone. It is now February 2009, a year since the trouble started. She was scared, and I was too, because there was no explanation for this. There were no tears in my clothing. I have a shirt on, I'm underneath blankets. How did that happen? A few days later, Stephanie receives a visit from a close friend, accompanied by someone who may be able to offer some answers. Uh, no, I haven't been anywhere, you know. Yeah. So, well, but thanks for thanks for bringing her by. Sure. Um, yeah. This is the lady I was telling you about. There was a lady that I knew through church, and she had a friend who's a sensitive. She could feel, see certain things. So, um, do you like the ten cent tour? Come on, I'll show you around. She walked around and walked around the house and walked around outside. I sense the land has quite a history. She told me a husband and wife and their son. I know you've been unfaithful. No, no, I haven't been. The father was extremely jealous. Dad, Dad, stop! Boys, I've told you before! He ended up killing the mother and the son. Huh. It was the father that was haunting the property. I don't know if I reminded him of his wife or, or you know, what. A few nights later, Stephanie's scratches don't appear to be healing. It shocked me in the sense that I was actually seeing a spirit. I'd only seen him for a couple of seconds, but I saw him, I mean, clear. The look on his face, I just, I'll never forget that. He, he just looked very sad. I don't know if it was the actual little boy that was killed on the property. I know that there are lost souls. I fully believe that. I believe that ghosts could communicate in their own way. I did not believe that they could physically harm you. Yeah, what? What, what happened? What happened? Hey, look! 
what? Just... No. It burns, baby. It burns. What do you want me to do? I want you to make it stop. Okay, how do you want me to make it stop? Okay, oh. I don't know what to do right now. To see your, your skin open up when there's no explanation for it, the pain that goes along with it, it's like a liquid fire poured in there. It'll be okay. I had to convince myself it was real over and over and over again, even though I saw it with my own eyes. Stephanie and Nick are too afraid of how people will react to share their experiences. We had nothing to compare it to and nobody to talk about it with because who is there to talk to about something like that without sounding like you're crazy? All they can do is try to resume a normal life. Hey. Hey. How you doing? OK. Yeah. Does it hurt? Uh, yeah. Uh, I told you it would. <laughs> He's good, though. He's really good. I hope that's not the result of Nick's last attempt at a free tattoo. <laughs> no, it's uh, I just I fell. just happened to you? Oh. oh. Right in front of him, just my leg just opened up. We gotta get out of here. No, don't leave. Don't, don't go. She was being tortured. Tortured in a way that I've never thought was possible. I felt totally powerless. And I begged, why are you doing this to her? November 2009. What the hell just happened to you? Stephanie Winter comes under attack from a supernatural force. We gotta get out of here. No, don't leave. Don't, don't go. It's hard to go through. <laughs> we felt alone. Nick feels powerless to protect his wife. Why are you doing this to her? Could Peter, Stephanie's love-struck admirer, have placed a dark spell on her? Or are the attacks in some way related to the violence and twisted souls of men who died too young in the Civil War battles that raged nearby? A medium has offered a third possibility, that the spirit of a father who killed his wife and child here could be looking for his next victim. A week went by, then she got scratched again. And then another week went by, and she got scratched again. And it happened like that maybe half a dozen times. How do you explain those scratches to somebody? And especially if you get hold of somebody who doesn't believe in the paranormal. My husband would have been locked up. I'd have been in a loony bin somewhere. And then what do you do? Finally, the couple reluctantly decides to seek help from a paranormal investigator. Retired detective Rick Atterstein specializes in violent hauntings. The nature of Stephanie's scratches catches his attention. He's seen this before in his research photos. What was most interesting to me was that the, each wound appeared to be in, in a set of three scratches, three linear scratches side by side. The three scratch marks is indicative of a negative entity haunting. Three scratches are very commonplace with the demonic. And the reason that is, is because the symbol of three is a direct mockery of the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. If we're looking at a negative entity, usually it has to be invited or summoned somehow. I started taking into account the possibility that something happened to invite or to cause this phenomenon to occur to her. Is there anyone in your life that is involved in occult practices or someone who might mean you harm? There is this, this guy, um, Peter, and he just... started becoming like very stalkish with me. And, uh, and mentioned something about a love spell.
it's possible that he could have put a curse on her. I wasn't expecting to hear that. Stephanie is now convinced Peter may have unleashed some dark force to torment her. Everything kind of fell into place. Everything made a little bit more sense. Okay, this is, this is what's going on. This is why it's doing that. This is why it has so much power. Rick agrees to conduct a paranormal investigation the following week. Until then, the evil presence could attack at any time. Get out of my house. Get out of my house! Get out! I was very angry and very confrontational, and I wanted it out. No more! You hear me? No more! Get out of my house! This thing was such a coward, and it was just attacking in the middle of the night and just out of nowhere and when your back is turned and that's what made me so angry. Where are you? Leave me alone! Where are you? Where are you? Huh? You here? Leave me alone! Where are you? Help me, help me find it! Help me find it, please. Help me find it. Just go away. I begged my wife to move out of the house because I felt like the house was evil. I just wanted away from it. But then after talking with Rick, he said, well, you know, that might not work. In cases this severe, sometimes the entity will follow you no matter where you go. Rick and a colleague set up electronic surveillance equipment to monitor every room in the house, hoping to capture video evidence of something supernatural. During this first phase of the investigation, I tried to document what was going on, tried to experience something that uh, that would lend me to believe that what she was telling me was true. Unfortunately, I was unable to document or see or experience anything, but I was still of the opinion that something was happening. I just felt you know, in my heart that something was going on. It would stay hidden when Rick was out, but as soon as he left, I would get scratched. I became afraid to leave my wife alone because at that point, it became an every other day thing almost, or at least a couple of times a week. You doing OK, baby? You want something to eat? I'm not hungry. It was playing mind games with her because I could definitely tell that her spirit was being crushed. I think that it was trying to influence her into giving up. You haven't been out of the house in days. I don't... I don't want anyone to see me like this. Can you understand that? I didn't want to go out in public because I was covered in bandages all the time. I was so depressed. I, I didn't want to be around anybody. I didn't want to see anybody whose life was normal because my life was so far out of whack that I was Jealous. I'm gonna make a sandwich. Would you like one? Fine, I'll make you one anyway. Ah. I could feel somebody on top of me. 
I felt hands around my throat. Step. 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 I thought my wife was dying. Let her go! Do you want to hurt somebody? You hurt me, but you let her go! For more A Haunting, go to DestinationAmerica.com. Stephanie Winter suspects a former friend who developed an obsession with her... You don't want to say no to me. ...has cast a dark spell... ...unleashing a demonic spirit to extract his revenge. Something unseen is now trying to kill her. I could hear Nick talking to me. I could hear him calling me. Steph? And I remember the only thing I could move was my left pinky. Let her go! If you want to hurt somebody, you hurt me, but you let her go! I was so mad about it, I was threatening it. Come and get me. Come get me. Why are you going to pick on her? <laughs> All of a sudden, she just <gasps> grabbed a breath of air, and she sat up. <coughs> we must have sat there like that for quite a while. It was very easily capable of killing me. They tell paranormal investigator Rick Atrestein about the violent attack. Being that it was spiritual in nature, logic would dictate that the solution is probably spiritual in nature. So I contacted a demonologist and asked their opinion as to what we could do to stem this activity, to quell these attacks. The demonologist gives Rick instructions for a sealing ritual. He suggested I get some blessed candles, 100% beeswax candles. And the incense, and the incense is already lit. And some pontifical incense and some holy water have the candles and the pontifical incense blessed by priests, and then burn those, the candles and the incense. Incense has been used in religious rituals since the time of the pharaohs. To Roman Catholics, it symbolizes the prayers of the faithful rising to heaven. Through the world. And then you'll also recite the prayer I gave you. This will seal the house with positive energy and keep you safe. That gave me a little bit of hope because there was positive forces that were now involved that we had hope of running this thing out. Listen to the words you're saying. Listen to the meaning behind them. And in every room, you need to do the same thing. Let's move through there, and you can recite that prayer as we walk. All right, let's, let's move on. St. Michael, the, the archangel. archangel. Defend us in, in battle. battle. We would do that every single night, and it really did seem to work. Against the wickedness, wickedness. and snares of the devil. After a couple of months of it just being quiet, I'd gotten used to it, and I was relieved. You know, you try and put your life back together a little bit and kind of reflect, like, wow, you know, did you really go through that? Stephanie gets used to her new nightly routine, convinced she is now safe again. It's March 2011, a year since Stephanie started performing the sealing ritual. And snares of the devil. O oh, Prince of the Heavenly Host, in the name of God, cast Satan and his evil spirits into hell, who roam the earth seeking the destruction of souls. Nick! Nick! There's, there's, a, there's a guy outside! What? There's a guy outside! Baby, Stay be, here. be Stay careful!
There's nobody out there. Who do you think it was, babe? I don't know. But I don't think he's stupid enough to come back here. We were standing at the front window kind of watching to see if we could see anything, anybody kind of hanging around. <laughs> this thing grabbed the back of my head and just yanked me down. Did you hurt your neck? You okay? Shh. Don't move, don't move, don't move. Just relax. That was absolutely devastating because I thought it was over with. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas called me. He was very frantic. He said that the attacks had resumed. In April 2011, paranormal investigator Rick Atristein begins a 48-hour investigation, hoping to gather evidence to justify a formal Catholic exorcism. In order to get the Catholic Church involved, it takes a great deal of evidence and a great deal of documentation. Stephanie. What? There's something I need to ask you. What? Maybe you shouldn't use the sealing ritual while we're here. You want to use me as bait? If you're not comfortable with it, I'm certainly not going to try to convince you. No. <sighs> no. Let's do this. I was pretty much willing to do whatever I had to do to get some kind of evidence. Rick and a member of his investigation team will stay up all night monitoring camera feeds. On night one, there's disappointment as nothing happens. They return to their posts for night two. She's having a tough time again, sleeping. Yeah, she is. Virginia, Stephanie Winter is being tortured and tormented by a demonic entity. It may have been unleashed through a spell cast by a spurned former friend who became obsessed with her. Paranormal investigator Rick Atristein believes an exorcism by the Catholic Church may be necessary, but first he needs to capture proof of the evil presence. so severe that in the kitchen itself, where she was standing, there was a pool of blood. There was also some minor blood spatter on the wall adjacent to where she was standing, which indicates to me that there was some force applied to that particular scratch. But the evidence is not strong enough to take to the Catholic Church. The video evidence was significant, but not conclusive as far as I'm concerned, because she was in and out of the kitchen. If I want to take a skeptical stance, she could have done it in, in another room, come in and pretended that she got scratched. I was kind of mad about that. I was like, oh, man, all right. The investigation continues. I see it. I've got it. She needs me. Go, I've got to go, go, go. Oh. Oh. I actually saw the welts form in three scratches, linear scratches side by side, and I saw them start to bleed. 
At that point in time, I knew that she did not scratch herself, that they were fresh. We got it. We got it. <laughs> that piece of evidence was more significant than the, than the original scratching because of the time period that was used under constant surveillance. We felt so good. It was like, thank God, Rick finally saw this. He saw it with his eyes, and he's got it on camera. Yeah. I knew that I had something of a negative nature. Rick contacts David Considine, a lay religious demonologist in Connecticut, whose work is officially sanctioned by the Catholic Church. Anytime that we're having outward manifestations where we're getting scratching uh, and or someone's being punched or something of that nature, it's always reason for concern. We do have exorcists that work with us. What we had planned was for a mass to be initiated in her name. He suspected that uh, she might be under demonic oppression. Demonic oppression is when a person starts to come under control of the entity. It's just a step away from becoming fully possessed. If that were in fact the case, she should show some type of adverse effect from this, even at that distance. This was not revealed to Stephanie, nor was it revealed to Nicholas. The day of the mass arrives. As a priest in Chicago prepares, 700 miles away in Manassas, Virginia, Rick arrives at Stephanie's. Hey. Hi. I didn't expect to see you today. I know. I left my notebook in here. Do you mind oh. if I come in a minute? No, no, of course not. Come on in. That praesertum service to a Stephanie Winter. The priest begins the mass for Stephanie. Perpetua Semper Virginis Intercessione. Did your friend review the evidence at all, or? Yes, he did. He's reviewing it right now. Perpetua mentis et corporis sanitate gaudere. Et gloriosae beatae Mariae. As we forgive those who trespass against us, for the blood of Christ. Sit down here. Lean back. What's that? Depart, Satan. I felt fine one second, and then felt like somebody set a bomb off in my head. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. For more than two years, Stephanie Winter has been tormented by a negative entity at her home in Manassas, Virginia. A haunting that may owe its origins to a dark spell unleashed by a former friend in revenge for Stephanie rejecting his attempts to win her heart. In the spring of 2011, a priest 700 miles away performs a mass in her name, hoping the demon will make its presence known. I did not reveal this information to Stephanie. She did not know anything about it. Gloriosae, Beatae Mariae, Liberare Justitia, Why sumus Domini Deus, Liberare Justitia, Oh my God, I'm so dizzy. Per Christum Dominum Nostrum, amen. She had a severe migraine headache. Oh my, my head, I don't feel good. That was a diagnostic indicator that this was probably a legitimate demonic oppression. Stephanie is in imminent danger of becoming fully possessed by this evil spirit. Rick contacts religious demonologist David Considine who arranged the diagnostic mass with the priest in Chicago. No, no, she's sick. She needs our help. We felt that it was something that could be handled by the minor form of exorcism. There's not enough time for the church to sanction a full exorcism. Instead, paranormal investigator Rick Atterstein will try to drive out the demon. Rick was instructed to purge himself, to clean himself, as it were, on a spiritual level. It is intense, and I fear for Stephanie. I absolve you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So that way he could be stronger for Stephanie and for himself, 
and to lessen the possibility that he could come under possession. I knew the clash was imminent. I knew the clash was coming. Something was going to happen. Rick is finally ready to take on a demon. Are you okay? Are you ready for this? Yeah. There's power in God and his word. I'm going to read the entire ritual. Whatever happens, I want you to keep reading along with me. Most glorious prince of the heavenly armies. Most, Most glorious, glorious prince, prince of, of the, the heavenly, heavenly armies. armies. Saint Michael the Archangel. Saint, Saint Michael, Michael the, the Archangel. Archangel. Defend us in our battle. Defend us in our battle. Against principalities and powers. Against, against principalities and powers. Against the rulers of this world of darkness. Against the rulers of this world of darkness. Against the spirits of wickedness in the high places. Against the spirits of wickedness in the high places. From the snares of the devil, deliver us, O Lord. From the snares of the devil, deliver us, O Lord. From the snares of the devil, deliver us, O Lord. From the snares of the devil, deliver us, O Lord. From the snares of the devil, deliver us, O Lord. From the snares of the devil, deliver us, O Lord. God arises. God arises. His enemies are scattered. His enemies are scattered. As smoke is driven away. As smoke is driven away. So they are driven. So they are driven. As wax melts before the flame. As wax melts before the flame. So the wicked perish at the presence of God. So the wicked perish at the presence of God. Most precious heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Place your hands there. Most precious heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most precious heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most precious heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. I think it's over. <laughs> yes, yes, I think it's over. For now, it appears that the house belongs only to the living. It's been about two years since anything's happened, thankfully. And slowly, uh, Nicholas and I have gotten our lives back on track and are able to kind of loosen up and laugh. It's funny how much you miss laughing when you don't do it for a couple of years. I've been able to see things that give me confirmation that there is demons or a devil and that there's a God. The couple continues to wonder what caused the haunting and if it is gone for good. Did Stephanie's love-struck former friend cast a spell and conjure a demon? Rick did bring that up to me, that Peter could have done that. He could very well have brought this thing to me. More than anything, Stephanie wonders about the ghost of a boy that appeared to her. I don't know if it was this demon that was in my house trying to gain my trust or if it was the actual little boy asking for help, but I've never seen him again. I'm still on edge because I don't know if it's completely gone or if it's just dormant again. <laughs>